Bonjour class, welcome to this week's video. Get your textbooks, get your workbooks. Let's get ready to learn a new verb. Okay, here we go. Lesson 15, if you're following along in your textbook, the first page we're gonna take a look at is page 218, 218. And this is a brand new verb for us, the verb venir. Last week we learned the verb aller, which means to go. Aller, aller, aller. Now we're learning the verb venir, which is the opposite of aller. It means to come or to come from a place. So let's learn the verb first. Starting with je. Je viens. Tu viens. Il vient. Elle vient. Nous venons. Vous venez. Ils viennent. Elles viennent. Of all of the irregular verbs that we've learned, être, avoir, faire, aller, and now venir, this one is probably the easiest one because it has the fewest changes. Notice that vient, vient, je and tu are the exact same conjugation. Il vient, elle vient, you just add a T. That's not unlike things we've seen before. Notice that nous venons and vous venez are just O and S E Z. Très facile, n'est-ce pas? And then finally, il vient, it's an ENT with a twist because there is an extra N. So I always say il vient, so I remember the extra N. Let's look at something else with this verb. Je viens, V I E. That is a change. You'll see up here where my cursor is blinking. Venir starts V-E-N in the infinitive. But when you conjugate it, you change that to V-I-E. To vien, V-I-E. Il vient, V-I-E. But nous venons. There's no I. Vous venez. Where's the I? And finally, il vient. LVN, the I is back. Do you know what this means? Do you remember what this kind, what kind of verb this is? If I had a pen where I could circle, if we were in school, I'd be doing this on the board. Circle all of the conjugations that have the same stem. Circle the conjugations that start with VIE. You would get this big old awkward shape of like a boot or a clown shoe, it's a shoe verb. Veneer is a shoe verb, right? We learned these before. So here is another example of one of those where je, tu, il, and il plural have the same stem, the same first part of the verb, and nu and vu are out here doing their own thing. But not really doing their own thing because remember, nu and vu are the laces of the shoe and they tie back to the infinitive. Notice that the infinitive, V-E-N, nu and vu, V-E-N, there it is. I have a little song, of course I have a song. I have a song that goes with this verb because much of the time that you use the verb veneer, you also use this little preposition de. De means from. When you're saying, hey, where are you coming from? Your hair's all wet, you're carrying a towel, I'm coming from the pool. You use the word de to say I'm coming from. So in the song, we also use the word de a few times to help us remember that fact. And it goes like this. Je viens de, tu viens, il vient. Nous venons de, vous venez, il vient. Sing it with me. Je viens de, tu viens, il vient. Nous venons de, vous venez, il vient. I can hear your beautiful voices, my first hour choir. All right, that is our new verb for this week. And along with that, we do have a little bit of vocabulary, a little bit of practice, and some comparisons between this verb and last week's verb, alle. So let's start over here on the left-hand side. This is review of last week. So I'll go over it with you here in the video, but if you wanted to later try doing this on your own and then check your answers, that's a good way to practice. Let's start with, where are you going to? So using the verb aller, I'm going, je vais, à la plage. Je vais au parc. Je vais à l'hôpital. Je vais 
a la bibliothèque. Remember when you say where you're going to, the word in French for to is a, or a la, or o, a u. And sometimes with a word like hôpital, which starts with a vowel sound, it's going to be a, uh, accent grave, l apostrophe. A la plage, au parc, à l'hôpital, à la bibliothèque. The same rule applies for veneer, only this time we're not using a or o or a la, this time we are using de, de, or de la, or sometimes del apostrophe if the word starts with a vowel or a vowel sound. It all depends on whether or not the word is masculine or feminine. So just like over here, it's a la plage because la plage is feminine and it's au parc because le parc is masculine, well, the same thing applies over here. But instead of saying à la plage, we're saying I'm coming from this place. So it is je viens de la plage. Use that word de, which means from. Je viens du parc, du, from the parc. Just like au parc, au, means to the parc, du parc, du, means from the park. That's where I'm coming from. D'où viens-tu? Je viens de l'hôpital. D-E-L apostrophe. Et d'où viens-tu? Je viens de la bibliothèque. Because la bibliothèque is feminine. So, to recap, when you have aller, je vais, you use à la, aller à la. When you have venir, je viens, you use du or de. Je viens de, tu viens, il vient. Remember the de. Okay, that's the first part. And you'll be able to practice with some of that in your workbook. We're also going to learn some new vocabulary. For the vocab for this week, we are on page, I gotta look at my notes. We are on page 220. 220. So go ahead and take a look at that. All the vocabulary is listed there. Some of these you already know. Le foot, le volley, le basket. And here are some things. They're not sports, but they're still things you can play because these are games. Les dames, that's checkers. Les cartes, cards. Les échecs, chess. Et les jeux vidéo, video games. You guys knew that one already. When you're talking about playing these things, either the sports or the games, you also use that preposition o or a la, depending on if it is masculine or feminine. So if we take a look at foot, it's je joue au foot, je joue au volley, je joue au basket. Not much crazy there, those are just all masculine. When we come over here to some of the new vocabulary though, some of these are feminine. Oh, and some of them are plural. The very first one is plural, so it's going to be je joue aux dames, A-U-X. Je joue aux cartes, A-U-X. It's plural. Most of these are plural. All of these are plural. Je joue aux échecs, A-U-X. Et je joue aux jeux vidéo, A-U-X. Because you can't just really play one checker. Right? I'm going to play checker pretty boring game. I'm going to I'm just going to play card. We're not going to play cards today. I'm just going to play card. I win or I lose. Yeah, it's got to be plural. These have to be plural. So for the plural form of o, it's a u x. There it is. Now that changes a little differently. It changes a bit when you're talking about instruments. So these instruments are also part of your vocabulary. Um, let's just go over those first. Le piano, la guitare, la flûte, le saxophone, la batterie, la clarinette, le violon. Those are pretty much all cognates, right? Except for la batterie, and that means drums, like you're beating on the drums, la batterie. Now, depending on whether it's masculine or feminine, when you talk about playing one of these instruments, you don't use o or a la, this time you use de, just like we did with the verb venir. So it would be je joue du piano, je joue de la guitare, de la flute, 
du saxophone, de la batterie, de la clarinette, et je joue du violon. Do any of you play any instruments? If it's one of these, now you know how to say it en français. Très bien. So between that and the verb, well, there's one more thing we're going to talk about. And I think we've learned this expression before. We've seen it at least a couple of times. It is this word, she. C-H-E-Z, not pronounced chez. It's pronounced she. Chez moi. Chez toi. Chez lui. Chez elle. Chez nous. Chez vous. Chez eux. Chez elle. These pronouns that go with the word she, which means at the house of, are called stress pronouns. They are found in your textbook on page 221, les pronoms accentués. And it's like the word me. Instead of saying I, which is je, we say me, moi. Chez moi means at my house. It's a nice little compact way to say at my house. In English, it takes three words. In French, chez moi. Chez moi, at my house. Well, if chez moi means at my house, what do you think chez toi means? At your house. Chez lui means at his house. Notice it's a different word than what we're used to because the word il means he, but lui means him. So it's the difference between he and him. Chez lui, at his house. Chez elle, that's the same. We're used to that. Chez nous, chez vous, our house, your house, that all works for us. Chez eux, at their house. And finally, chez elles, at their house as well, if they all happen to be girls. So, between these stress pronouns, the new verb veneer, and the new concept of du and de la versus o and a la with some of our vocabulary, you guys have a lot to practice. Feel free to watch this video as many times as you want, and I will have some workbook pages posted for you in Google Classroom. Again, if you have your workbook at home with you, you can just go ahead and use that to do the activities and post them to Google Classroom so I can give you feedback. Merci, class. Et au revoir.